Hello and welcome to Learn System View in 5 minutes. This is tutorial 28 on a very interesting topic of channel fading and equalization. This is needed by virtually every system designer because channel distortions are the reality and while doing system design we need to figure out what kind of equalization uh, filter and effort will be needed on the receiver side in order to overcome the channel fading conditions. So let's talk about it. First thing first, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification to make sure you keep getting notified about the new tutorial posts. After watching the video, hit the like button and click the share button in order to share this tutorial with your colleagues and friends who may be interested in watching those. Let's get started with our agenda here. So during the last few tutorial videos, we have been focusing quite a lot on doing mixed signal system design. And I talked about using native system view library blocks. We talked about how to use MATLAB, how to use HDL code inside system view platform. So here we take one step further and talk about the channel fading distortion uh, modeling into the system view platform. For incorporating the channel effects, we do have a channel model in system view. And if you type in a channel in the library browser, you have this communication channel, which I'm using here. We also have MIMO channel model in case you are working on MIMO systems. Now in this channel model, we can use a user defined channel model and do your own custom profile for the delay and the power you know, aspects of that. We can also use uh, Rishian or Rayleigh fading and associate a certain velocity um, you know, for us to create equivalent distortion. Apart from user defined, we do have other pedestrian model, vehicular models, uh, suburban models, and so on. So the variety of models here. Also, if you have your own MATLAB code or C++ code for your own custom channel modeling, those can be incorporated directly into system view, like we have, have shown you in, in some of the previous videos. Now, once we have this channel distortion modeled and I'm using the output here, you can notice I have also given a wire label channel out, which we will use later in this video. And I'm feeding this data to VSA to perform the demodulation and show me the response. So here in VSA, you could see the effect of channel fading because the, the constellation is all over the place. You can see the EVM is getting distorted to around 26%, and every symbol has a very high amount of error causing this scattered constellation plot. Now, in VSA, we do have um, you know, equalization you know, capability, and while working on your system design, uh, you could utilize all these nice capabilities to reach to a very good conclusion very, very quickly. So let me demonstrate that. In measurement setup, if I go to digital demod properties, there is a button here called compensate. Under compensation, you do have an equalization filter. If you activate that equalization filter, you can select the filter length as well as the convergence criteria, what you're looking to arrive at. You can see with my default setting of using nine symbols and convergence criteria of two raised to two e raised to minus nine, I do have a response. On the right hand side here, we can see the channel frequency response due to the fading channel model. And also the equalizer's impulse response showing you various step coefficients and what it is doing in order to compensate for this. Now here you could play with filter length and every time you change the filter length, notice it's an adaptive equalizer filter, which is on run mode. It tries to converge to a right distortion model to flatten the distortion caused by the fading channel. You can also set various convergence level. For example, if you need something fast, you could do something like e raised to minus seven and arrive at that decision quickly because the, the amount of time your you know, equalizer filter takes to train itself depends on a lot of these parameters such as filter length and convergence criteria. So here we can notice e raised to minus seven is not sufficient to do a good job, so we can go ahead and make it um, at least one e raised to eight uh, convergence criteria or whatever you, you plan to do. And once we are able to arrive at a good number, for example, here I can see whether I can work with lower number of symbols 
while working with this channel. Now you can see my EVM is improved to around 9% and this seems to be quite stable. Uh, equalizer working for us. Now once you're sure we achieved a good job, the question is how do I utilize this um, you know, knowledge or these tap coefficients into my system design to make sure really it is making the difference in my actual system design. Now from here, if I select or make this trace active, I could export these coefficient into a mat file by going to file, save, trace, and we can save the trace into a mat file. For example, here in my case, I'm going to save it under test file. And once we are done, we don't need to save header with the data, we just are interested is in, in the step coefficients. Now we can go back to system view and stop it and, and look at the test parameter test file here. And if I double click on this text file, I could visualize that file into in my MATLAB interface, like um, you, you guys surely are pretty pretty much experienced looking at it. And here we can see a variable get, will get created Y. And this variable will have our data, which is the complex coefficients. And here I can notice all the tab coefficients of the filter, which I want to use in my system view design. Now this mat file data can be directly read into system view. And here I have an equation page where I'm using a simple command called load and then just deleting the mat file. And the variable uh, available inside mat file is y. And then I'm assigning it to one of the variables in system view in case I want to use it. So here in my filter coefficients variable, I would like to read the conjugate of y and y is the input coming from mat file. And once I go ahead and execute this equation and from the right hand side, if I look at workspace variable, I can see there is a filter coefficient which, which I just read from mat file. Now if I want more closer look at these coefficients, I could right click, add to a table and we can create a new table and look at real and imaginary part of those filter coefficients. And here, once I have read these coefficient into a variable, I can then pass this information directly to a system view component. So once I go back to system view, um, let me activate this piece here. And now the first thing I'm going to do is take the channel output. You can see I am using the same Y label here. I just convert the RF envelope signal into a complex baseband signal. And then using this FIR filter, I'm just reading the same filter coefficients data. And this data eventually is getting read from the mat file. So this is how simple it is to get data from mat file into system view and use it either with the sink or, or with the component. And then after the equalization filtering gets applied, I up convert the signal back into 2.4 gigahertz, just to make sure I have one-to-one -one correlation between these two components here. And now with both of these VSA active, if we go ahead and run simulation, first of all, let me go back to the, the channel. So this was my original you know, faded response where I did apply an equalization but here, let me switch off equalization because I have another VSA plot. So without equalization, this was the original channel response of around 25% EVM. The another VSA uh, here, which, which is reading the output of my equalizer filter in system view design, shows me the EVM of around 9% and the pretty good constellation, which is very well correlating with what we achieved earlier when we were deciding the the filter of, of our equalization technique. So this way, our job becomes very interactive and simple, and you get all the great measurement algorithm inside VSA, and that can be leveraged while doing your system design with the system view platform. Now, in a case where you do not have luxury of using VSA, and you would like to use uh, system view native library blocks in order to implement equalization, there are plenty of filter models or adaptive filter models here. So if I just type in filter in the component history, you know, search block, you can notice there are plenty of adaptive filter components here. So you have adaptive filter core, you do have, um, you know, RLS, uh, LMS, all those kind of adaptive filters, and they can be used inside your system design. 
Now, in order to understand how to use these components very quickly, you can go to Help Example Explorer. And the first thing which you will see in the tree is Adaptive Equalization Library. And these are the examples using different algorithms or different way of doing things. One of the best one which I liked is using this system ID APA. Now this example, if I go ahead and open this workspace, basically is showing you how to use some of those models here. So in this case, we are just using a, a Gaussian noise kind of signal. And this is the fading channel model, which in this case is represented by an FIR filter with some unknown coefficients. However, we can see the frequency response of the channel and the kind of distortion it is creating. And these are the actual coefficients used behind the scene. And then the second component I have here, so I take my actual input signal as well as the, the channel distorted signal. And this adaptive filter will allow me to quickly arrive at the, fill, the distortion caused by this channel. And then once I have that coefficient, it's my equalizer filter, and I can go ahead and set up some of these parameters like filter length, a bias level, and so on. And here I have an error filter at the output with a flow level of minus 200, and I can see my error signal in dB. So once I go ahead and run the simulation, I can uh, open up the error signal plot, and I can see how much time it takes to reach to a minus 200 dB kind of flow level. And here we can notice it takes around 200, you know, 80 microsecond in order to train itself and converge to that point. Also, if I just want to see comparison, how good job uh, my adaptive filter has done, how accurately it has predicted the filter coefficient or the channel, um, you know, frequency response. On this plot, I have two things plotted here, then unknown signal coefficients, and both currently are in red color. So if I turn one to blue, and you can notice one is blue, one is red, and both of them are overlapping exactly on top of each other. That means my adaptive filter was able to do a very good job. Now, in order to, if you still have some confusion, let me uh, deliberately offset the y-axis by factor of one. And now you can see the blue, which is my unknown system, and the red one, which is predicted by my feed forward. So these are the real coefficients, and similarly, we have data for imaginary coefficients, and again, I can here uh, provide a vertical offset of one, showing you how good was our adaptive filter algorithm behind the scene. So whether you prefer to work using basic system view models or leverage the great interactive capability of VSA, you have choice and you can proceed as per your preference. So that's all for this video. I hope you like the content presented. And this will be something useful for your system design job. Feel free to try it out yourself and don't forget to hit the like button below the video and subscribe to my channel for more such interesting tutorials. Thanks a lot for your time and have a great day ahead.